Welcome back. You know, this past week, it just felt different. Something fundamentally shifted in the world of AI, and it feels like we all just crossed the line without even realizing it. So I want to walk you through exactly what just happened and why this moment feels so pivotal. Let's just get right to it, because this is the big takeaway. For the longest time, AI has felt like a fascinating experiment, a powerful tool, a, a game. Well, that's over. AI just stopped being a game. And it all starts right here. With this sudden, almost unbelievable leap in creative power, the baseline for what these models can just do, it shot through the roof this week. So first up, OpenAI quietly rolled out an upgrade to its core model. People are calling it 5.1 because the jump in quality is so noticeable. And the difference, it's subtle, but it's really important. The old model, you know, it was fine, but often a little wordy, a bit robotic. This new one, it's sharper, more concise. It follows instructions way better. And honestly, it just feels more human. It's like you're talking to a clever colleague instead of a machine. But if you thought that was interesting, hold on. Over at Google, things got truly wild. It looks like they've been stealth testing what is probably going to be Gemini 3.0, and the jump is just staggering. The previous version, 2.5, could build you like a basic website. This new one, you give it a single prompt and it spits out fully playable 3D games or incredibly realistic clones of sites like YouTube, even animated graphics. It's one-shot creation of stuff that's complex and interactive. It's insane. And let's be super clear here. We're not talking about static images. We're talking about a user typing in a prompt and getting back a playable Minecraft clone with buttery smooth controls, a 3D moon landing game with actual physics and a heads-up display, even a first-person boxing game with sound effects and reflections. This isn't just coding anymore. This is instant functional creation on a level we have not seen before. This leap is absolutely incredible. But it also forces us to ask a really, really serious question. With AI this powerful, what happens when it's used for something more than just making cool games? Because this week, that's not a what if anymore. It happened. A line has officially been crossed, and it resulted in the first major publicly disclosed AI-driven cyber attack. This quote from a security report that just dropped, I mean, it says everything. This wasn't some theoretical exercise at a cybersecurity conference. This was the real deal. This is the thing that actually scared the experts. So here's the playbook. Anthropic revealed that a Chinese state-sponsored group used their clawed AI to automate a massive cyber attack. And they were clever. They broke the whole process down into tiny, seemingly harmless tasks. First, ask Claude to scan networks pretending it was for research. Then, have it identify weak points. After that, get it to write the code to steal credentials and move through the system. And then finally, have it locate and package up valuable data for theft. But this, this is the number that should really get your attention. Somewhere between 80 and 90% of the entire hacking operation was run by the AI. The humans only had to make a handful of key decisions. This fundamentally changes the game. The price of admission for a highly sophisticated cyber attack just it just evaporated. Okay, so on the one hand, we've got this incredible new creative power. On the other, we have this terrifying new risk. With these new capabilities and these new dangers, how is the industry responding? What's the move? Well, they're responding with a trillion dollar arms race. It is a frantic global scramble for the raw computational power, the compute, that's needed to build and control this next generation of AI. Let's just sit with this number for a second. Meta has committed $600 billion to build out its AI data centers by 2028. No, that is not a typo. That's more than the GDP of many countries, all bet on one single idea. Whoever controls the most compute wins the future. And speaking of compute, Google just threw down the gauntlet. Their new Ironwood Superpods are packing 42.5 exaflops of power. An exaflop is a quintillion calculations per second. I mean, the numbers are so big, they're almost meaningless. But what's not meaningless is the message. This is a direct challenge to NVIDIA's long-held monopoly in the AI chip world. The race is on. And this desperate need for cutting-edge AI is forcing some seriously strange bedfellows. Apple is now paying Google, its fiercest rival, a billion dollars a year to power new features in Siri with a custom Gemini model. But here's the really clever part. It all runs on Apple's private cloud, so Google never actually sees any user data. It is a huge strategic admission from Apple that building a frontier AI model is now too hard and too expensive to do it alone. So why? 
Why all this money? Why these crazy alliances and this hardware arms race? It's all pointing in one direction. It's all about building a general intelligence. And check this out. This is from Google's new agent, SEMA2. It learns to play video games just like a person by watching the screen and using a keyboard. The first version, SEMA1, had about a 31% success rate on new tasks. But look at that jump. SEMA2 is already at 65% and it is closing in fast on the human baseline. And the goal here isn't to get a high score. It's to develop skills that can transfer to the real world, controlling robots. And that brings us to the holy grail, the thing everyone in this race is chasing, artificial general intelligence, or AGI, a system that can understand or learn pretty much any intellectual task a human can. For a long time, this was just science fiction. Now it is the explicit goal driving billions and billions of dollars of investment. And the people actually building these systems believe they are getting close. Elon Musk said recently that with his next model, Grok 5, he calculates a non-zero chance, maybe 10%, of achieving AGI. For the first time, the leaders of the field are talking about this as a near-term possibility. That's a huge shift. So, what happens now? Let's take a breath. We've got this insane explosion of capability, a massive gold rush for hardware, and these very real escalating risks. We are officially navigating a world of both incredible promise and very real peril. And it's so important to remember that for all the scary headlines, there is so much potential for good here. Like in Maryland, the state is now using Claude AI to help its citizens get critical services, food stamps, Medicaid, way faster. It's processing over 150,000 documents a month. This isn't abstract. This is AI solving real problems for people who desperately need the help. But that amazing positive story exists right alongside this sobering reality. A recent analysis just put it perfectly. The incentives are not lined up right yet to make sure this all goes well. And that, that right there is the central tension of this exact moment. And this slide really just says it all. We are now officially in a multi-way arms race, a race for capability, a race for compute, and a race for security. Everyone is sprinting, but nobody can even see the finish line. Which leaves all of us with the one question that truly matters after a week like this one. Are we genuinely prepared? for what happens next.